All right, so let's now talk about Shunor signatures, which is a new addition to Bitcoin. So now instead of elliptic or digital signature algorithm, you can also use Shunor signatures. Both of them use the same elliptic curve, so nothing much change, but Shunor signatures have some advantages. As you can see, it dates back to 1991. So you might ask why Satoshi didn't use it in the first place, if it is so good compared to elliptic or digital signature algorithm. The thing was that uh, this algorithm was patented at that time. This is why Satoshi couldn't use it. At the time, around 2008, when Satoshi was working on Bitcoin, actually this patent expired. So Satoshi could use it, but elliptic or digital al signature algorithm uh, has, had been used for a very long time. So he had confidence in that algorithm, but since Shinor signatures was patented, not much people used it. So uh, he couldn't trust the algorithm. This is why it didn't come with Shinor signatures in the first place. So the Shinor signature scheme uses a cyclic group G of prime order P, a generator G of G, and the hash function H. So you can use it with you know traditional groups, but also with elliptic curves. So the group actually depends on your choice. This is why. In Bitcoin, we are going to use the same group that we use for elliptic curve digital signature algorithm, which is the points on the elliptic curve, you know, SECPK, so 256K1. So algorithm works like this. You have a private public key pair, small x and capital X, where, as you can imagine, capital X equals to G to the X. Of course, this is in multiplicative notation. Since we are going to work on elliptic curves, we will have a point G on the elliptic curve and we will add it to itself X many times and obtain a point on the elliptic curve. Sign a message M, the signer randomly chooses R in ZP since the group order is prime order P and computes R equals to G to the R. Then we calculate C as the hash of these values, okay? Then calculate S equals the R plus CX. As you can see, the secret value X is used here. Then the signature is capital R and small s. Signature is verified if G to the S equals to R times X to the C. So actually, ID is very similar to the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm, uh, except minor differences, but this allows us to have some good properties that we are going to talk about. So with Bitcoin BIP 340, we had this update, right? So Bitcoin has traditionally used ECDSA, A, so elliptic curve digital signature algorithm signatures over this elliptic curve with SHA-256 hashes for authenticating transactions. So this is what we talk about in the past. but Elliptic or digital signature algorithm has a number of downsides compared to Shunor signatures over this elliptic curve, but also in any elliptic curve. Provable security, Shunor signatures are provably secure. In more detail, they are strongly unforgeable under chosen message attack, which is shortened as this. This also provides the following property, which is called non-malleability. <laughs> The SUF-CMA security of Shunor signatures implies that they are non-malleable. On the other hand, ECDSA-A signatures are inherently malleable. This means that a third party without access to the secret key can alter an existing valid signatures for a given public key and the message into another signature that is valid for the same key and message. So this issue is discussed in different BIPs. So here uh, you shouldn't understand that, you know, there is a weakness in elliptic or digital signature algorithm. So other people can generate signatures instead of you. Here they generate a signature which you already signed for. So you sign the message, they, they look at your signature and they provide another signature for you, which also valid for the same message. Okay, this is what we call malleability in this case. So assume that you are signing a, physically signing a document, which is on white paper, and somebody provides the same document in yellow paper, and your signature is also valid there. But you originally signed this one, 
but they created a copy of it. So you might think that why this would be a problem, right? So since you already signed the message and the signature is also valid for the same message, having two different signatures, which actually verifies the same message shouldn't be a problem in practice. Generally it is not, but if you're in light note, you know, then you might be misguided with this case. But more importantly, we prefer Schnorr signatures because of linearity. Here, uh, signature aggregation comes into play. So Schnorr signatures provide a simple and efficient method that enables multiple collaborating parties to produce a signature that is valid for the sum of their public keys. So instead of the multi-signature protocols that we mentioned before, in the case of elliptic or digital signature algorithm, if and parties are signing it, you end up with N signatures. Here, you end up with single signature. This is the nice thing. So let's talk about why we need such a key aggregation. While using the predicate language thing that multi-signatures is very flexible, it is inefficient in terms of size, computational cost, and privacy. Blockchain contains every transaction since the system's inception, resulting in a final state the set of unspent points, also called the you know, UTXO sets. As a global consensus system, kept in check by the ability for every participant to validate all updates to the ledger, the size of signatures and predicates and the computational costs for verifying them are the primary limiting factors for its scalability. This is also important, by the way. The size of signatures are really important, and there are uh, different signature algorithms in cryptography which provide short signatures. And I'm guessing that in the future, Ethereum will, uh, you know, add those algorithms in their system. Because if you have smaller signatures, you can put more data on the blockchain, right? The size of predicates is even more important as they are part of the UTXO set that is maintained by every node. You, know, you also keep them in the memory. The computational requirements for signing or the communication overhead between different signers are far less constrained since you are communicating with each other you don't mind that kind of communication but you know for the notes it is a bigger problem so for this reason there is a protocol called music so this is for Schnorr multi-signatures and this is the actually the thing that is added to bitcoin okay idea is as follows we start with parameters g is a cyclic group of order p small g is the generator for g so there's a typo, it says off. N is the number of signers. M is the message to be signed. Okay, so the cyclic group here, as you can imagine, we are using the elliptic curve of Bitcoin. Key generation, each signer randomly chooses a private key, XI. Then compute G to the XI, which provides capital XI. So as you can see, we are still relying on the hardness of this good logarithm problem. Of course, this is a multiplicative notation. Again, when we work in elliptic curves, we simply add the point G to itself XI many times. Okay, so here's the citation for this work. Signing works like this. Since we are MP, we have N signers, we have N public keys. Every signer computes hash of this, uh, the whole set, and then you know, uh, it's personal. Uh, public key and obtains AI. Then compute the aggregated public key as follows. You know, this multiplication provides the aggregated public key. I sign a randomly chooses RI, okay? Compute this and calculate the hash of it. Signers send TI to each other. Upon reception of every RI, they check if TI equals to the hash of this RI and abort if equalities do not hold. So I'm going a little bit fast, so let me explain a few things. So here, H, H's are uh, hash functions, right? But as you can see, I put H egg and H com. So actually in the algorithm, you can use different hash functions. This is why it says this. So this hash function is used for aggregation. And this hash function is used for the computation of RI. So algorithm, the protocol allows you to use different hash algorithms here 
But at the end, you can simply use SHA-256 for all of them. Okay, so you don't have to deal, you know, very much about this thing. So one of the questions was asked when I recorded this uh, lecture last year. They asked me if why everybody is calculating the hash of RIs, TIs, sent to each other like this, and then they send every RI to each other and check if they match with the TIs, and of course if the equalities do not hold. So you can uh, look at the problem like this. So Every signer actually at the end will send their RI values to each other. So why they also first calculate the hashes of these RIs sent to each other and then send RIs and check if this is valid. So idea is as follows. If you don't do this beforehand, when you calculate your RI and send to other people, other people can choose their RI values depending on your data you send. So first you commit to it, then explain what you committed to, okay? So everybody has to commit to something of these TIs. Then they will explain what value they are committed to, okay? So this is commitment hash. Signing continues like this. Everybody multiplies these RI values and obtain a single R. Then you sign, this is the signature. So you sign it like this, again, using a hash function calculate this SIs and send every uh, signer send SIs to all other co-signers. The signer can compute by summing all of the S's, SIs to obtain S, and the signature is RS. Okay, this is how you sign it. Verification is similar. You have a multiple uh, public keys here, but you know, M of them is enough. Sorry, M is the message and people are signing. So you obtain the signature R and S. Now you have to need to verify it. You again calculate the aggregation like this. You calculate this as the sign as did. You multiply all of the X I's and obtain X tilde. You also uh, calculate H signature. So you calculate the hash of these values, obtain C, and accept the signature if multiplication of all of these values end up with g to the s. Okay. So hashing multi-signature, as I mentioned, there are many uh, different phases. So hash function hcom is used in the commitment phase, hx to compute the aggregated key, and hseq to compute the signature. These hash functions can be constructed from a single one using proper domain separation. In BIP340, Bitcoin uses tag SHA-256 hashes. This proposal suggests to include the tag by prefixing the, the hash data with you know, SHA-256 of tag, concatenated with SHA-256 of tag. So this actually tag allows you to you know, provide domain separation. And you might think that why I'm doing this twice, actually the data size should be 512 bits. This is why they do it. So this picture is from uh, William Buchanan. I recommend you to visit this webpage. So he actually shows uh, the multi-signature music for two people. So in this picture, both of them have their public and private keys here, okay? They do the calculations I showed in the previous uh, slides, but here he uses the same hash for all of them. I think, but only the typo is here. So S equals to this, but actually this should be S1 equals to this. So this is the signature of the first person. This is the signature of the second person. So they add it together like S equals to S1 and S2. And they also add their values R1 and R2 to obtain R. And this becomes your aggregated signature. Okay. Alice also verifies it by the steps that we mentioned. So, uh, but at the end, the important thing is that both of them signs the message, but they simply add it by an addition operation to obtain the final signature. So the person who looks at the result, they will only see RNS. And actually we can use, uh, in these signatures, we can use addresses that starts with one. So the person who looks in the, at the you know, blockchain and just looks at the 
address transferred to it, they will see an address that starts with one. So they will think that this is just a traditional transaction, but actually it is a multi-signature transaction. You have to look at the transaction to see that it is a multi-signature. So this actually provides you a little bit more uh, anonymity because otherwise people know when you do a multi-signature just by looking at the address or the transaction. So some final comments about it. There are some variants of music. So the music algorithm I mentioned is actually included in the uh, Bitcoin. So multi-signature scheme for Schnorr signatures with support key aggregation used in Bitcoin since November 2021 via the Taproot upgrade. But people uh, suggested uh, some variants of it. So there's a paper which pro uh, actually written by most of the same people who created this protocol. In this music too, this requires two communication runs instead of three. So in this case, the people who want to create a multiple signature, you know, have to communicate with each other. In this original one, you need three runs. Here you need two runs of communication. And there's also another version. Uh, here uh, I provide the uh, references, music and D. This is somewhat, you know, useful in some cases. So here, instead of randomly choosing a number, the nonce depends on the message and the signer's public key resulting in a deterministic signing. Provide security against failures in randomness generation and virtual machine rewinding attacks also requires two communication runs. But of course, these are you know, published after music. So Bitcoin only supports music now, but in the future, we can see some better variants and they may be adopted by uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies like you know, Ethereum or any alternative currency. 